Hi, folks. Um, I've got some items today before we start our uh, notes that are inequalities in one triangle. And I just want to kind of recap a couple things with you about triangles because triangles are such an important foundation in geometry. And I really want to make sure that you have the basics before we move on. I also want to introduce you to some of the things that are on the screen right now um, so that you are a little more familiar with them whenever I use them to explain things in our notes today. So the first thing that we have is a protractor. This is a protractor and we can use it to measure uh, the angles that are created by certain segments. And then these things here are nothing fancy. They are stretched out paper clips. Um, but I do want to point out that all of the uh, yellow and white ones, they all came from a small paper clip. So the small size paper clip. And notice that they are all the same size, meaning that I'm going to intend for these to be congruent side lengths today. The silver one uh, came from a small paper clip, but I cut it so that it would be really small. And then this red one came from a larger paper clip, so it is quite a bit longer. So I just wanted to introduce you to the pieces that I'm going to be using today. Um, I want to go over different types of triangles first. So I'm going to move my protractor and in the classifying triangles set of notes, the first thing that you talked about was an equilateral triangle. And you talked about classifying by side length. And here is an equilateral triangle that we could classify by side length. We could say that one, two, three, all three sides are congruent to each other, meaning this is equilateral. Um, we can talk about an isosceles triangle, meaning if I took one of these out and I put in one that was a little bit different. There we go. Then this would be an isosceles triangle. Um, notice that the equilateral triangle is also an isosceles triangle because it, has at, it had at least two congruent sides. It had three. So that was an isosceles triangle as well, but this is what you might be more comfortable seeing as an isosceles triangle. And finally, we have the scalene uh, triangle, which looks like Ooh, this is a really obtuse triangle here. There we go. So it looks a little bit more like that, where we have three sides that are all different lengths. So those are kind of the foundations for the names of classifying triangles if you're classifying by side length. Uh, we also happen to classify by angle. Um, and the, the type of triangle that I want to bring up is the equiangular triangle. And one thing that you should have been able to take away from that first set of triangle notes is that equilateral triangles are always equiangular and equiangular triangles are always equilateral. Now, we can use that information to kind of reinforce something from our next set of notes, which was the angles of triangles notes, and that was the triangle sum theorem. So I'm going to introduce my protractor here. I'm going to put it where there is no glare. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, side lengths to make an equilateral triangle. So I'm going to put first side length down here at the bottom. The way you use a protractor is you put one of the vertices at this little point and one side along the bottom line. And then I have another side that creates an angle. And then I have this final side closing in right here. So notice that in my equilateral triangle, this angle measure right here goes from 0 to 60. So this is a 60 degree angle right here. And if these are all congruent, that means that the angles are all congruent. And we've got a 60 degree angle, 60 degree angle, 60 degree angle. And that sum of those three 60 degree angles equals 180 degrees. So this is just a little bit of a review and an introduction to the tools that I'm going to be using today. One of them is nice and official, and the other ones are paper clips. So let me move these out of the way. So the first thing that we discuss today is a pair of theorems that are very much related. Uh, the first one says if two sides of a triangle are not congruent. So I know there's only one blank, but this needs to be not congruent. 
So if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the larger angle is opposite the longer side. The larger angle is opposite the longer side. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. It means that there's a relationship between the sides and the angles that are opposite of them in a triangle. So I'm going to move my notes to the side and I'm going to bring back my protractor and I want you to notice something. I'm going to use my two yellow and I'm going to recreate my equiangular triangle. Making sure that my vertices touch and here is my equiangular slash equilateral triangle. Now remember if I'm reading this angle measure right here then I read from this side to where it touches these little tick marks to this side where it touches these little tick marks. So that full amount of degrees is 60 degrees because it's going through that 60 right there. So what I'd like to kind of pose to you is if I remove this side and I put this side in here. Well, that does not create a triangle right now because I've got to make my sides touch. So this and this need to touch together. But what's going to happen to this side whenever I try to make it touch this point? I'm going to have to open this angle up even more. I don't know how much. I'm going to guess it's about right there so that I can have this triangle actually close and be a triangle. There we go. So what's happened is that that angle measure that used to be 60 degrees, let me point with the pen, this angle measure that used to be 60 degrees, in order to accommodate a longer side, this angle measure had to open and it had to become larger and that angle measure is now 100 degrees instead of 60 degrees. So in order to uh, accommodate a larger side, we had to open up this angle a little bit more. And so that's what this theorem is saying, is that when you have larger sides, they're opposite of larger angles. When you have smaller sides, they're opposite of smaller angles. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way, bring my notes back. So if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the larger angle is opposite the longer side. So here it's telling us that side AB is larger than side BC. So this side is bigger than this side, which means that the larger side should be opposite of the larger angle. So angle C, that measure, should be greater than the measure of angle A, which is the one that's opposite of this side. So larger angle opposite larger side. The next theorem says kind of the same thing, but with respect to angles first. So it says if two angles of a triangle are not congruent, they're not the same measure, then the longer side is opposite the larger angle. So here it tells us that the measure of angle Z right here is greater than, this should say, the measure of angle Y because we can't compare uh, numbers for angles unless we're talking about the measure. So angle Z's measure is greater than angle Y's measure. That means that the larger side is opposite of the larger angle. So that means that side XY is greater than side x, z. So we just need to take away from these theorems that the longer sides and the larger angles should be across from each other and the smaller sides and the smaller angles should be across from one another. So example one says write the angles, I need the angles, not the sides but the angles, in order from smallest to largest. So I need to go find the information with the smallest side. So that would be this side right here. This is the smallest side length. So that means that the smallest angle is going to be right across. That would be angle H. 
The next smallest side would be side GH at 28.5. So that next smallest angle would be angle J. And then finally, the largest angle is opposite of the largest side, HJ. So that would be angle G. So this is the order of angles from smallest to largest. And I didn't know anything about the angles, just the side lengths. So now I'd like for you to try it part B. It asks for you to write the sides in order from shortest to longest. So pause your video and try it out. So you can't order the sides unless you have all the information about the angles. By the triangle sum theorem, if I add 54 degrees and 39 degrees and the missing angle measure, then I'll get 180 degrees. If I solve, that means the miss missing angle measure is 87 degrees. So the sides from shortest to longest go from the shortest angle to the medium angle. LM and to the largest angle that will be opposite of the longest side. So KL. So these are oops, my side lengths from shortest to longest. Okay, so let's look at part C. Part C says write the sides of triangle ABC in order from longest to shortest. And we're given angle measures for angles A, B, and C. But they're all expressions. Some of them are quadratic expressions. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture because I don't have a picture. And it might be helpful to me to draw a picture. Now, I don't know what kind of triangle this is. I don't know if it's equilateral or if it's isosceles or I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and give this general shape to it. Angle A is measure is x squared minus 25x degrees. Angle B's measure is x squared minus 10x degrees. And angle C's measure is 5x plus 28 degrees. I can't presume to make any claims about the angle measures once I know what the value of x is. But thankfully, we learned about the triangle sum theorem before, which means if I add up all interior angle measures, I should get 180 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, create my equation, and I'm going to solve for x. This does have quadratics in it, so I might need to recall my knowledge of factoring by grouping in order to solve for x. So pause your video and try to create your equation and solve for x. So go ahead and check your values for x. You have to combine your like terms. You have to move your constant to the other side so that you have standard form of a polynomial. AX squared plus BX plus C. You have to factor out a GCF of 2. You have to find your magic numbers of 4 and negative 19. And when you solve for X, X plus 4 equals 0 gives you a value of negative 4 for a solution. And X minus 19 equals 0 gives you a solution of X equals 19. Now your first um, thought might be to take negative 4 and throw it out because if I substitute in a negative, usually you get negative values. However, if I take negative 4 and I substitute it for x here and here, I'm going to get a positive number plus a value. Here I'm going to get a positive number plus a value. Here I'm going to get negative 20 plus 28, and that's positive 8. So I get all positive values, and negative 4 could possibly be my x value. But if I take 19, and I substitute it for any of these. Let's substitute it here. 5 times 19 plus 28 is going to be way too big. Way too big to incorporate the triangle sum theorem so that the sum is 180 degrees. So we're going to forget about this one. We're going to use this one because it's the only one that makes sense within our triangle problem. So I'm trying to write the sides of triangle ABC in order from longest to shortest. I need the sides. So in order to get the sides, I need to find the angle measures. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute for the measure of angle A. I have negative 4 squared minus 25 times negative 4. That means the measure of angle A is 16 plus 100, which is 116. I have the measure of angle B equals negative 4 squared 
minus 10 times negative 4. That leaves us with 16 plus 40, and that's 56 degrees. And finally, the measure of angle C is 5 times negative 4 plus 28, which we already discussed was 8 Ooh, degrees. So, if I want to write my sides from longest to shortest, I need to figure out my angles from biggest to smallest. So my largest angle is angle A. That means it's across from the longest side, which is CB. My middle angle is angle B, which means that the middle side length is across from angle B, that side AC. And then finally, my smallest angle is angle C, which means that the shortest side is across from it, side AB. And these are my side lengths from longest to shortest. So let's go ahead and move to my next side. So the next theorem talks about the side lengths of a triangle and the side lengths that can make up a triangle. It says a triangle is formed by three segments, of course, but not every set of three segments can form a triangle. There are some sets of three segments that do not make a triangle. Segments with lengths of 7, 4, and 4 can form a triangle, but segments with lengths of 7, 3, and 3 cannot form a triangle. And why is that? What do we need to happen with this point and this point? Well, they need to be joined. And right now they can't be joined because they're too far apart. Even if I swing them down here and down here, they're still not going to be close enough to be joined. So the triangle inequality theorem says this, the, that the sum of any two side lengths of a triangle is always going to be greater than the third side length. So my hypothesis with this triangle is considering two side lengths of any triangle. And if I add them, my conclusion is that it should be greater than the other side. So if I take side AB's length and side BC's length, and I add them, that should be greater than side AC's length. If I take side BC's length and add side AC's length, it should, of course, be greater than side AB's length. And if I take side AC's length and add it to side AB's length, then it should be greater than BC's length. So let me show you what that looks like with these paper clips. So here is a long side and two kind of medium sized sides. So if I join here and I try to get these to connect, of course, they can connect. And the reason is because these two sides, these two smaller sides, whenever I add them together, they are bigger than this red side. So if I put them side by side, and I kind of figuratively add them, there we go, notice that the sum of the two yellow sides is larger than this red side right here. Okay, so that's why these three sides make a triangle. Let's talk about what happens when I introduce this side. So if I want a triangle, I need these two sides to touch at their endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and swing this in until they touch. They still don't touch. They still don't touch. Hmm. What do you notice? The length of this long side is the same as the length of these two sides put together. That means that the sum of these two bigger sides, it's not bigger than the other side. This does not create a triangle. What this makes is a collapsed form of a flat line. So all this makes is one line. It doesn't make a triangle. It just collapses onto itself and it makes one line segment. I'm sorry, I should be saying line segment, not line. So if you have two sides that add together to equal the third side, then you do not have a triangle. You have a line segment. Now what happens if I take my scissors whoop, 
Should be using wire cutters for this, but I didn't bring those to work today. So what happens if I take two smaller sides that their sum is less than this longer side and I try to make a triangle? Well, I've got this going on and there's no way that this side and this side are ever going to touch at those endpoints because they're just going to collapse onto the line and they're never going to be able to reach. So that's not going to create a triangle. So let's look at some examples. It says, tell whether a triangle can have sides with given lengths of 3 and 7 and 5. So what we need to do is we need to check the sum of each two sides and make sure that it's greater than the third side. So 3 plus 7 needs to be greater than 5. Is it? Yes. 3 plus 7 is 8, and 8 is greater than 5. Let's check another pair. What about 3 plus 5? It needs to be greater than 7. Well, what is 3 plus 5? It's 8, and 8 is greater than 7. I just realized 3 plus 7 is not 8. 3 plus 7 is 10, which is still greater than 5, so it works. But please excuse my mistake. Finally, we have to check 5 and 7. 5 plus 7 needs to be greater than 3. And 5 and 7 are both greater than 3 by themselves, but if I add them, they're definitely greater than 3, which means that, yes, a triangle can have sides with 3 and 7 and 5 as their lengths because all three of these situations work. So let's talk about part B. It says tell whether a triangle can have sides with the given lengths of 4 and 11 and 7. So go ahead and pause your video and try that one out. Check the sums of each two sides and make sure that the sums are greater than the remaining third side. So if you compared the sums of two sides to the remaining third side, you'll find out that everything starts working out until you get to 4 plus 7. And 4 plus 7 is not greater than 11, it's equal to 11. And what did that look like? Well, that looks like a flat line segment. So can a triangle have sides with given lengths of 4, 11, and 7? The answer is no, because we cannot have the sum of two sides equal the third side. OK. Part C. Can a triangle have the following side lengths and perimeter? If so, state the side length of each side. AB is 3x plus 2, BC is x squared, CA is 2x, and the perimeter is 38 centimeters. And all of that means really nothing to me unless I have a diagram. So I'm going to draw my triangle. Ooh, probably should have made my vertices like correct, but that's okay. This will be A and B and C. There we go. So side AB is 3x plus 2, side BC is x squared, and side CA is 2x, and the perimeter equals 38 centimeters. Okay. So I need to figure out if a triangle can have the following side lengths and perimeter. In order to do that, I need to know what the side lengths are. So, if the perimeter is 38 centimeters, and I know the perimeter is the sum of all side lengths, then I should create an equation where I add all of the side lengths and set them equal to the perimeter. Now again, this looks like a quadratic equation, so I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms. 2x and 3x is 5x. And if I move the 38 over, I would get minus 36 and that equals 0. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 36 and add to be 5. Would be 4 and 9, but one of them's got to be negative. If the sum is positive, that means the bigger number is the positive one. And my x is either 4 or my x is negative 9. And seeing as how one of my sides is 2 times x, negative 9 would not be a satisfactory x value, so I'm going to ignore it and use the other one. So here, 
If x is 4, that means that side CA is not 2 times x, it's 2 times 4 units. CB is not x squared, it's 4 squared, which is 16 units. And AB is not 3x plus 4, it's 3 times 4, or sorry, 3x plus 2, it's 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 2 more, which is 4. So I need to check these side links. Now that we've done all of the tough work when it comes to finding the side links, I'd like for you to go ahead and check to see that it creates a triangle. So I'm able to check the sums of two sides, and every sum of two sides is always greater than the third side, so that means that yes, these three sides can create a triangle, and I'm supposed to state the length of each side. So AC is 8 units, oh I'm sorry, centimeters. CB is 16 centimeters, and AB is 14 centimeters. Okay. Final side of our notes today. If two sides of a triangle are known, you can find the range of values for the third side. So this is the range of acceptable values for that third side that would still close and make a triangle. So you can find that range of acceptable values if you know the other two sides. And here's the formula for it. That third side we're going to use as x. So this is the unknown third side. It's got to be less than the sum of the other two sides. However, it's got to be greater than the difference of those other two sides, the absolute value of that difference. So example three says two sides of a triangle have the following measures. Find the range of possible measures for the third side. So we have a triangle that has a side of 5 and a side of 7. That third side has to be less than 5 plus 7, but it has to be greater than the absolute value of 5 minus 7. Well, 5 minus 7 is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And 5 plus 7 is 12. So any x value between 2 and 12, not including 2 and 12, would work as a third side and create a triangle with those other two sides. Last problem. Two sides of a triangle have the following. Find the range of possible measures for the third side. So pause your video and try this problem. values is anywhere between 4 and 20, not equal to 4 and 20, just between 4 and 20, and I should probably point out that x is the length of the third side. I didn't define my variable, I probably should. x is the length of the third side. 